Throughout human history, there have been, are, and will always be trials of bravery. Do you have a heart full of pine tar and rusty nails? Or is there a small kitten playing around on a lacy pillow inside your chest? If you're a secret badass, but you wish to unmask yourself before the world, what feat of valor should you perform? Well, how about identifying, clutching, and eating an ancient vegetable covered in glass needles full of acid? Uh, Perhaps that counts. Welcome to a timeless world of food, medicine, pain, and healing. Welcome to the world of Urtica Dioica, the stinging nettle. Stinging nettles like wet feet, meaning well-forested areas with moisture and shade, or riparian areas near a body of water. Unlike many other weedy plants, Urtica species thrive in rich, undisturbed soil. Since the nettle prefers partial shade, I can attest that it grows quite well as a house plant. Urtica dioica can be anywhere from 1 to 9 feet tall, depending on the season. The leaves are opposite and coarsely toothed at the margins. Now here's a big giveaway. The leaves are covered with tiny hypodermic needles which resemble hairs all over their surface. These silica-laden trichomes contain a cocktail of histamine, acetylcholine, as well as tartaric, oxalic, and formic acid, which is irritatingly injected into the skin of anyone who touches it. The small green flower clusters can be found on the upper leaves later in the season into summer. While the stinging nettle is considered to be invasive, there is no need to kill the plant while harvesting from it. Simply snipping the tender tops and a few leaves here and there is all you'll really need to do. If you fear the stinging powers of the nettle, be assured they are swiftly destroyed through cooking or drying. Once defanged, the stinging nettle makes for a gentle and ancient medicine, delicious tea, and culinary ingredient mentioned in the Bible and by authors prior. Pliny the Elder touted the roots of stinging nettle as being effective at tenderizing meat. The sprouts are said to be healthful, and I can attest to the quality of their flavor. The taste is sharp and mimics both spinach and tea. Speaking of, the dried leaves of stinging nettle do a fantastic caffeine-free tea impersonation. The tender young leaves are used for making soup and as a healthful pot herb. I can tell you that nettles make a fantastic broth with nothing more than reduced nettle water, salt, pepper, olive oil, and onion powder. Finally, nettle wine and nettle beer are both celebrated brews. The Abnaki and Quinault people used stinging nettle in powdered form as a snuff to treat nosebleeds. The Bella Kula, Chihalis, Peyute, Pomo, Kasaya, Tanaina, and Quilut peoples used the plant to combat rheumatism by stinging and whipping the affected areas. The Cowlitz, Lomi, Quinault, and Squawkson people gave an infusion of the plant to women to aid in childbirth. The young shoots were considered diuretic or urine stimulating and scurvy preventative in the early American medical lexicon. The stinging nettle was also reported to be used to produce an herbalist beer. Much like the Native Americans, Southern Confederate soldiers also used the stinging nettle to combat rheumatism. In various historical publications, I found other miscellaneous uses among European Americans and their ancestors. The stinging nettle was used to combat edema or swelling and to treat festering wounds. A fistful of the seeds placed into a bottle of claret was used to combat the symptoms of colic. An electuary was made of the nettle by adding one part of nettle leaves with double the weight of wine mixed with honey. A decoction of nettle was said to combat the symptoms of diarrhea, hemorrhoids, scurvy, kidney stones, and bleeding. The juice of nettles was used in medieval times to combat tuberculosis. Nettle soup was prescribed by early medical practitioners to bring about sleep, to alleviate coughs, and gout. It is reported that Roman soldiers would flog themselves with stinging nettle to ward off the cold of winter and to warm the blood. In India, the whole plant was used to treat kidney stones, burns, anemia, rashes, internal bleeding, and diabetes. A list this long spanning many cultures and thousands of years begs the question, does this oft-touted panacea of a plant carry medicinal properties that stand up to the rigors of science? 
an incredibly thorough analysis presented in a paper titled Pharmacological and Toxicological Evaluation of Urtica dioica uncovered outstanding blood glucose lowering action in stinging nettle extracts in mice. Further, the aforementioned study found antibacterial and anti-inflammatory effects were both significantly present and synergistic in their action. The study concluded that the traditional use of the plant as a medicine in a context of Indian folk medicine was justified. Good old Pliny the Elder mentioned that stinging nettle was used in religious services and was thought to ward away illnesses for a full year. And neither might have said whether he would still go on suffering the nettle to be drawn lightly over him, stinging him to madness, or whether he would grasp it in his naked hand boldly and dare the issue. E. Lynn Linton, 1822 to 1898. Tender-handed stroke a nettle, and it stings you for your pains. Grasp it like a man of metal, and soft as silk remains. Aaron Hill, 1685 to 1750. In the clefts of the valleys must they dwell, in the holes of the earth, and of the rocks. Among the bushes they bray, under the nettles they are gathered together. New American Standard Bible I have slept in nettle sheets and dined off nettle tablecloth, and I have heard my mother say that she thought nettle cloth was more durable than any other linen. Thomas Campbell, 1777 to 1844 But if thou shouldest otherwise decree, then may all thy skin be frayed and torn with thy nails. Yea, and in nettles mayest thou crouch. Theocritus, 3rd century B.C. Such a cold and cough it gave me that I was obliged to fly, and in the shelter of your bosom cure myself with rest and nettles. Perseus, 34 to 62 A.D. Nettle is rich in vitamins A, C, D, as well as manganese, potassium, calcium, and iron. Urtica dioica is used in making a green dye for wool. Stinging nettle was fed to hunting hounds by the English. It was also widely used as a fiber source in Scandinavia. A decoction of nettles was said to be used like rennet for the utility of making cheeses, and even to gum up leeks in tubs or vats. To make the rennet decoction, you must take one ounce of the herb and boil it with one pint of salted water. Nettle mixed with alum was said to make a yellow dye for Easter eggs. Much like yarrow, it's said that the Roman battalions would plant nettle in every area that they were stationed. There, the nettle plants may have remained to this day. This video version of the article appearing in PullUpYourPlants.com was made possible by my generous Patreon support. Without you guys, I couldn't do this. If you'd like to be a Patreon supporter, please follow the link in the description. Thank you.